I have the distinct opportunity uh, to introduce Mr. Stephen Rowe Lewis, the governor of the Gila River Indian community for some remarks. Governor, we are absolutely honored and thrilled for you to be joining us today and we thank you for taking the time. Governor Lewis, who is currently serving in his third term, brings a vast range of knowledge to the conversation about Western prosperity. During his tenure, Governor Lewis has implemented innovative solutions to longstanding issues that will foster resilience and create lasting benefits for the Gila River Indian community. Prior to his time in his current role, Governor Lewis served as the community served the community as Lieutenant Governor, a member of the Board of Directors of the Gila River Healthcare Corporation, a Gaming Commissioner for the Gila River Gaming Commission, and a member of the Board of Directors for the Gila River Telecommunications Incorporated. As Governor, Mr. Lewis oversees the implementation of the community's water settlement of 2004 and advocates for renewable and green technologies guided by the Otham agriculture history and cultural teachings. Restoring the Gila River has been a key milestone for his administration. In addition, the Governor Lewis works to provide educational opportunities for youth. And now it is my honor to welcome the Honorable Stephen Rowe Lewis. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I'm serving my fourth term. I just, I just got elected to, to my historic fourth term. So I'm the longest serving, serving governor for the Gila River Indian community. I know terms are very important for your bosses, for your governors, right? So, so welcome to the ancestral lands of the Akima, Otham, and Peeposh. Skugtosh. Good day, everyone. Anya Anapshuka, Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis, Amjit, Guuki, Sakatone, Gila River Indian community. It's really an honor to, to be able to say a few words for you. Uh, and, and, and to give you really what's happening right now on the ground in regards to all things water, all things climate change, which I know resonates among all the states here. I just had the opportunity to speak at the White House yesterday at the White House Water Policy Summit. Uh, and, you know, it, it was a, a great opportunity uh, to, to speak with, uh, with water policy experts and, and thought leaders and visionaries. And I'm continuing this message here as well with all of you. It's so important with this region, uh, the states that are represented here, uh, that we look at, we, we, we deal with, and we make hard decisions in regards to prosperity, in regards to sustainability, in regards to climate resilience that we are all dealing with. We are all dealing with on the ground every day. And our people have always been resilient. We've had to be, as the Akima, Otham, and Peeposh. The desert is a beautiful, beautiful place, but it's also a difficult place to farm. But we've always found a way to live and prosper as a tribal nation, as a people. Even when confronted with the most difficult challenges, like the taking of our precious Shudug, our Gila River water, we have always found a way, always found a way to survive, to thrive. And just as we are here today, in the face of an unprecedented mega drought here in the Southwest, and while we are dealing with this, the community, I feel, with making these important critical decisions, we're making our ancestors proud, the Hoogam people. With the partnership, with the generous spirit of engagement and responsibility, of course, for others, because water truly, water truly binds us, truly connects us. That is what we call our Atham Himaduk, our way of life. And I'm so proud to be the leader, to be the standard bearer of this message, of this approach, of this philosophy for our people, to all of you today. And as I mentioned, historically, we are an agricultural farming people. This land, what we call our Atham Juvet, this land, our history, here in this place has been nothing but, I'll say in one word, legendary. We welcome the visitors to this beautiful valley hundreds of years ago by sharing with them our rich farm produce and water. And we were the breadbasket of the Western armies in the US Civil War. And through that, we remained a prosperous people, 
until the 1870s, when new settlements were established in the upper, upper valleys, the, uh, the upper areas of the Gila River, where new farms and wells took our river from us. Now, the years that followed were hard ones for our people as we struggled to simply feed our own people and survive. Now, our struggles were noted throughout our country's history and served as the basis for federal efforts to help rebuild our irrigation system, bring back our river, and help our people emerge from this long, dark chapter. Now, my father, the late Rod Lewis, was the first Native American member of the Arizona Bar, and he led our people in their struggle to take back our precious water rights, succeeding where no one had done before, with a settlement of our claims to water in Arizona that was finally enacted into law 20 years ago this year in a tribal water settlement that was at its time the largest in U.S. history. Now, our resilience and our resoluteness in the face of adversity once again paid off. And we began a new journey to implement our settlement and protect our precious water once again. Now, that fell to me, where my father in the legal and political realms in D.C. and here in Arizona, he fought for our water, along with his, his, his great partner and now my friend, Don Pongrace, uh, one of our attorneys from Washington, D.C., and who heads our water, who headed our, our, our water team then and continues to head our water team now with me as we, at the next chapter, which was just as difficult as implementing and protecting the sanctity of our water settlement. So that really was uh, a history of our, 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 our resiliency and our resoluteness. Um, that as many of you know, our struggles have been, your struggles in many ways. The tightening vice of the historic mega drought on the Colorado River, which became the source of half of our community's water supplies as a result of our settlement, has been a constant threat to us, to us and our precious water. Now we know we must adapt. We know we must innovate. And we know we must all be resilient in the face of this existential threat. We, we've always had to be. We've always had to evolve. We've always had to adapt and innovate. That's in our blood, from the engineering spirit of, of the Hoogam Canals to what we're doing today. And really, I'm proud to say what we're doing today uh, reflects our traditions, our culture, our values, uh, and we've sought out partnerships because of this with our allies and friends. And we've sought to be innovators, true innovators. And we've worked hard to identify and implement solutions to hard decisions that we're all facing. And our efforts have met with some great success. And in 2019, I was proud to sign the drought contingency plan uh, that on behalf of our community, which pledged our resources to our common problem. As respected and trusted partners with the federal government, the state of Arizona and the entire region. Now, unfortunately, I've come to learn that there is no victory in the war on drought. I think we're all realizing that, but it's a constant struggle and it takes effort. And since 2019, we've once again launched ourselves into the breach to fight to save our community, our state, and our region. Now, our partnerships with the state and the federal government have never been stronger. Uh, I appreciate all of the resources, the unprecedented resources that the Biden-Harris administration has provided for this. You've heard our, our great Governor uh, Hobbs earlier. We have a great relationship with her and her administration as well. Moving forward, we have a great relationship with the city of Phoenix uh, under Mayor Gallego's leadership as well. And it's those relationships uh, that allow us to keep moving forward. And we've, and through that, uh, later today, I will talk a bit more about our solar covered canal project, which is the first in the Western hemisphere. Uh, and it was developed 
by a sovereign nation in collaboration with an all of government approach with our federal partners. And we have invested heavily in our on-reservation infrastructure as well, uh, seeking to put every drop, every molecule of water to the best use possible. We've launched our reclaimed water pipeline just last year, and we will complete it, complete it in October of this year. This one project alone will help put back 20,000 acre feet of water into the region's water systems for the long term. We have numerous other projects that are also in development, I'm, I'm excited to say, from regulating reservoirs to lining canals to building a new farm infrastructure for our reservation. Yes, we, we, we had our, our, our first business was farming, not hospitality, not the four casinos that we have, but it was farming and it was our Gila River Farms uh, that was our first business. So this is who we are, the people of the river. I'm proud to carry on the traditions of my ancestors of responding to adversity without pausing, but with innovation, with partnership and hard work. And my message today really is not about how well we are managing in our small region uh, here, but to call each of you out. Really, this is a call to action to redouble our collective efforts and join in this moment, really to make it a movement in finding common sense solutions to our common problems of dwindling water supplies and increasing needs, the growth of all of our communities, of all of throughout our regions, throughout our states, that we can only meet, we can only meet this challenge together. And of course, over the last few months, as we look to our future of reduced flows on the Colorado River, our water team has really gone through the state, scoured the lands of Arizona, and indeed our entire region looking for ways to invest in new supplies to help us augment the, the current dwindling supplies of water on the Colorado River. And we've traveled all over the state. We met with countless stakeholders and gone beyond to meet with others as well to look for solutions. Now, the good news is that we've had some success and we're working hard now on really how to develop these new resources uh, with our partners and the support of our congressional delegation. Our hope is to bring together for our region federal legislation that will be aptly titled, and this is, I'm, I'm saying this first, you, you, are, the first, you are the first audience uh, to hear this. Uh, that we will be working on federal le legislation that will be called the Colorado River Resiliency Act of 2024. Thank you. We hope that this legislation will help to light the way to a, a path of consensus among the seven basin states and provide hope that we can get this right, because we need to. We can find a way to work together and reach consensus on the hardest of tasks, which is to find agreement in the face of adversity. Now, this is who we are as a people, the Akima Atham, the river people. We faced adversity here for thousands of years, and we've always prevailed. And we will again, together with all of you. I look forward to working with each and every one of you in the coming years and months to prove that the West is at its best when we embrace science, yay science, right? <laughs> and tribal innovation as we work together to show that we can be resilient as a people in the face of even the most daunting of challenges. So thank you so much for the privilege of speaking here today. And I look forward also uh, to give comments on my next panel here with all of you. Thank you so much on behalf of the Heal Ribbon Community.